it. I know there'll be a few more, few more joining us. We've got a bunch of folks online as well. We have a special guest here from Victoria. Victoria. Well, Victoria. Grand Bay, actually. Grand Lake Bay. Okay. Yeah. So all the way from Vancouver Island, uh, here visiting in-laws. And what better thing to do than in-laws is drop the kids off with them and then go teach. <laughs> it's called a good escape, right? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Well, anyways, uh, yeah, we've got uh, two hours to kind of hang out with Tony, pick his brain. Uh, yeah, he's a call yourself a master herbalist, clinical herbalist, or a medical herbalist. I've seen some of your terminology. I could go with all of the above, okay. uh, none of the above, or anything in between, I guess. All um, right. Yeah, medical herbalist, I suppose, uh, by the therapist. I suppose as well. Um, yeah. yeah, he set a clinical practice out on the island for a while. He's been teaching at Pacific Rain College, and uh, he's been a guest presenter at the Medicinal Mushroom Symposium that we hosted here, as well as a presenter for the Canadian Herb Conference, as well as most recently, and I connected out with Vancouver Island at the Vancouver Island Herb Gathering. It was a good time. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. so uh, fortunate we have it. Here he is in Alberta, and uh, yeah wants to come hang out and spend his evening with us so lights out right i think it's uh you guys obviously call it a good place to meet and hang oh, out yeah. so yeah i was excited to get it i just knocked this off already yeah all good yeah, go. yeah. the mic's just for people online so okay obviously all right yeah well, okay well after you know 45 50 minutes of sorting out technical issues we're, we're finally uh, <laughs> we got that sorted yeah yeah Maybe, okay. maybe not our strengths. We're more plant people. Yeah, right? we're kind of like <laughs> spending all our time hanging out, with, hanging out with plants and mushrooms. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, right on. Um, yeah. yeah. So for those online, you can type in your questions anytime. Tony can see all that comments, questions coming through. Yeah. Let us know if anything technical does happen and we'll, we'll try and fin uh, fix it. But we are recording the session. We'll send this out to you afterwards. Um, yeah, and I'll do my best to attend to that. I, I'm going to put a caveat out that I'm not very good at multitasking. So, all right, I might stop and just go like this for a minute. Everyone can just talk amongst yourselves and then, <laughs> then we'll get back to it. So, thank you so much, Malcolm. Yeah, thank you. Um, so awesome to be hanging out in this kitchen with all of you. Uh, how many people do we have here so far? I think we got about 30 or something coming, but I call it 30 of my best friends by the end of it, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> Um, yeah, welcome uh, to the Light Cellar uh, Kitchen. This is probably not your first time here, but it's my first time here. And um, yeah, I'm super excited to be here. I hope everyone can appreciate my kind of ridiculous sense of humor with the <laughs> title of this thing. Uh, I tend to, yeah, I'm a dad now, so I'm fully uh, got the, uh, what is it, the, the permit for dad jokes. Uh, and, and you'll probably hear some as we go uh, along, so. Uh, just be prepared for that. So I also have notes. Uh, I'll be reading some from my notes so I can stay on track. Uh, I have a bit of an issue with going on to tangents and, and we could end up there for a couple of days. So I do teach entire weekend workshops and I always ask if there's more time at the end for people to come back. So, but who am I? Uh, I trained as a, a medical herbalist, as Malcolm said, at Pacific Rim College. Um, and I liked it so much, I hung around and ended up working there. And now I've been there since 2015. Uh, I worked in the dispensary at first, and then I teach a medicinal mushroom, uh, Materia Medica, which is kind of, we go through the mushrooms and we taste them and we try them. We're going to do a little bit of that tonight as well. Uh, not with mushrooms, but with herbs. Uh, and we call that organoleptic sessions. Has anyone heard that word before? Organoleptic sessions. We have one nodding head. And I know why, because it's just been in my yeah, class. class. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a word that's kind of fun, and I like it, and I use it often uh, because it's, it's fun, and I like words. So I'm a big word nerd. Um, what really with analytic sessions is, is how we sort of fine tune our perceptual systems as privileges, right? So we give drop doses of tincture, I give powders, and I give dry herbs, and I don't tell you what you're taking. It's kind of fun because I'm going to give you stuff and I ask you to tune into it. And at that point, you know, a lot of students go, go quite deep into themselves. And what I find is that I, I ask the audience for or, or the class for feedback. What are they feeling? What are they experiencing? And I fill the board. I don't have a board and a marker today, so I'm just going to ask you and we'll, we'll go with it that way. But uh, the interesting part is a lot of people will tune into the actions 
and the uses of the, the herbs themselves. So it's, it's really impressive. It's a great way to prove to yourself uh, that this stuff works because, you know, uh, if you're telling me that your brain is working great and your stomach feels awesome and I just gave you lion's mane, I'm like, well, that's kind of what lion's mane does. So that's fantastic. And uh, I'm always blown away and I'm always amazed. I just realized, I'm sorry online folks, I'm gonna be off screen a lot of times, I guess. But uh, if you guys can just like this, <laughs> I'll try to do my best with that. Uh, so yeah, so that's the setup for organoleptic sessions. And I think I kind of leapt into that without even giving you an explanation of who I am necessarily yet. So I'll dial back and I'll go into that a little bit. <clears throat> Pardon me. So uh, after my herbal training, I went to work in supplements for a while. Uh, and that was in a high sales environment, uh, fluorescent lighting, I guess a little bit of fluorescent lighting here, but it seemed more offensive at the time that I was working. And uh, I was always trying to kind of give people advice on the floor. I quickly discovered that when you're coming in to buy that heartburn pill, you don't want some guy stopping you and trying to figure out what's going on with you. You're just like a clean pill. That's what my experience was anyway. I was stopping people and going, whoa, 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 you're having chronic heartburn. Well, let's figure this out. They're like, buddy, I don't have 45 minutes to stand in your store. Can you give me the pill? Pick the pill out. So that was an interesting uh, industry to be in. And when I got pulled back to the college, I was very happy to be back in my environment. So it's the, the herbs and, and working that way. Um, I began my practice in 2015. I opened up a, a home-based clinic and um, that's been running wonderfully. It took a while, of course, to get uh, you know, my name out there and all of this, but now I'm having a hard time actually keeping up with people. Um, I started teaching around the same time at Pacific Rim College. I don't know if anyone's heard of it, uh, but it's a, a herbal medicine college. It's one of the only ones that you can attend in person. And for me, that was, that was a big difference between hopping online and I have a bit of the ADHD thing. So, you know, you, you get online and they're trying to be a self you know, it's pace and all that. And I'm like, well, I don't know what to do and all the information. And you know, I like to ask a lot of questions. And so when I found this in-person course, I was excited and I hit that up and I got to ask all the questions I wanted and, and here we are. So that was great. I started uh, a company in 2019, right before the start of the pandemic. And uh, I also started making sourdough before the pandemic. <laughs> I just want to say that. <laughs> Way before everybody else, I started making sourdough. Um, in, 20, in 2015 though, or sorry, 2019, I started Delos, which is my, my microdose company. And it was formed on the basis of, of this talk, essentially. Uh, I started to formulate and, and, and think about what I could do to mitigate the issues I was having with psilocybin. I'm gonna try not to get ahead of myself because I think that's some of the meat potatoes that we're gonna get into later. So. Like I said, I can tangent off in many ways. <laughs> uh, I started another company in 2020 called House of Oro, and we design treatment centers and, and treatment programs for psychedelic therapy. Um, we had our first contract, but some things went horribly awry, and, and unfortunately that uh, didn't follow through, but we're still continuing uh, to work on that project as well. I started working with my Silvio mind. I don't know if you had a chance to see this stuff when they walk in, I'll, I'll direct you over here afterward. By the way, I'm not a salesman and this isn't a sales pitch, but I do have products and I'm excited that I can actually do a talk now and say, well, I've got some stuff. Because people are always saying, you got stuff. And I'm like, I don't have stuff. And now I have stuff. So I'm excited to show that off. Uh, one thing I'd like to do is Malcolm, first of all, Malcolm kind of lied to everybody. I'm sorry for the folks online, but I am going to get you high tonight. I'm just <laughs> I am going to let you try the formula. One of my formulas, though, and if you're interested, there's another one over there to try later. Uh, but I am going to walk around. If you're okay with it, I'm going to give everyone little drop doses of things throughout this whole thing. The standard method of drop dosing with us herbalists is you stick your hand out and make a little cup thing there. Cup with your hand. I'm trying to show <laughs> these kids too. Uh, <laughs> You just got any kind of divot that you can make and I'll drop it into your hand and you just taste it that way and, and so on and so forth. I'm going to start with this one and this is just to prime us and get us in the vibration of the mushroom itself. And this formula, it's herbally supported. It's got lion's mane, reishi, passion flower, holy basil, skullcap, ashwagandha, 
and ginger. There's a little bit of apple cider vinegar and a little bit of honey in there as well as preserving. Now, like I said, I'm just going to get the vibration going. I'm going to get you all in the mood and in, in the groove. And just to set you at ease as well, uh, two full pipettes of this is one microdose. So I'm going to give you a drop. It's like, yeah, it's like a needle in a haystack. Right. It's a nano dose. It's a nano dose. <laughs> I did not have just coined a new phrase there. So you're going to do nano doses. But if you don't, if you don't want to, you'll have to. Remember, no drugs are being We got to say no drugs are being But we do have some medicines here. I, I'm actually giving people more like two drops, I guess, here. If that's what you want to do. And as I said, this will be so imperceptible, except on the energetic level. So some of you might tune into that and kind of be like, whoa, that's interesting and funky. When I first tried it, it reminded me of some vitamin thing that my mom gave me when I was a kid. I was like, this tastes like something. My mom was always into the latest, uh, you know, multi-level marketing uh, herbal preparation. Thank you so much. Now with this, uh, okay, what was this tincture called? Ian's asking. This tincture is the Mycelial Mind Nootropic. We have two formulas with Mycelial Mind. There's vitality and nootropic. Nootropic is more downward, nervine, kind of, uh, you know, uh, grounding, all that kind of good stuff for the hypervigilant nervous system, let's say. And the other one would be the opposite. So we have the difficulty kind of getting through that tough, kind of heavy dross in the morning. We don't have the energy or the, the, the zest for the day. That's what vitality is good for. And it's got things like yerba mate and cacao shells and things like that. So... And I can bring that one out uh, in a little bit. So this is my cilio mind. Now we're all, we got the vibration happening, right? This is kind of uh, the energetic that we want to be, the energetic mood that we want to be in. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about vibration and stuff like that. And don't worry, I'm not going to get too out there. But, but there's some really good stuff we can talk about when it comes to that. Uh, okay, let's see what else. Mushroom People is a project I started in 2022, and I think it is about to come to fruition in Victoria, it's a mushroom shop. So all these things, I'm kind of just throwing it out to the universe and, and seeing what sticks. And it's so far, it's all sticking. So I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I had a former life as an animator. I worked in television and film, which was a soul destroying industry. And anyone who works in it might realize that as well. I don't know if anyone here has a, has some experience there. But uh, this is all part of our journey, right? Our journey is what takes us to where we are. And I think it's important to lay the groundwork for people because it's part of sort of the medicine as well. And the medicine for me comes from a life of, uh, well, I had some bad examples at the start. I would say my father was a narcissistic alcoholic. Uh, and so I didn't take on the narcissism thing. My sister or sibling rather took that on. But I did go with the full alcohol thing. I was like, yeah, you know, 12, 13 years old, out the gates, let's do it. Start counting the, uh, I think we drank Budweiser solely and specifically because we didn't know that any other beer existed. Um, but yeah, drinking uh, and smoking, cigarettes, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we ended up going to Hawaii. My family went to Hawaii on our first family vacation. And uh, I had a real night out and the next morning, just felt terrible. I was always kind of torn with this, this whole alcohol thing. It was like, didn't feel right for me. And uh, I spent the day on the beach and managed to procure myself some herbal medicine. I'll just leave it at that. No, it's legal now, it's some cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old school, I'm still living in the past. But, uh, and it, it really changed my perspective that night on the beach. I, I said these words, I kind of muttered them out, but I said, if I keep going this way, this will be how my life ends. And all of a sudden, something really powerful happened. 
and I'll, I'll try to limit this and so that we can get to the, the task in hand, but uh, all I can say is that energy entered my body and it pulled my head, uh, actually pulled my spine completely straight. It's kind of strange. Any yogis in the class will probably know what I'm talking about. I'm not a yogi or I wasn't and I don't, I didn't know that, but uh, I, all I can say is my chakras turned on. That's freaking anyone out, I hope not, but something happened. Things were turning on and they pulled me and they woke me up. And uh, that led me into, okay, uh, I'm not in the world I thought I was. I'm in a different place entirely. And I live in a place that's perhaps a little bit more magical, right? So that's what led me uh, to uh, my herbal medicine journey. That day, I decided that I would change my vacation. I'd spent the first five days drinking beer. I thought, let's change the page here. And then the very next morning, I went on my first plant walk I've ever been on. I was in my early 20s. And this gentleman was showing us how to track First, he was showing us how to track pigs and things like that, and wild boar, and I was like, this is so cool. And then he started getting into the medicine, the plants. And uh, at the end of the talk, uh, the walk rather, he's, he was selling these photocopied duotang things of herbal medicine. It's like medicinal plants. And my mom's partner said, uh, do you want a copy of that? You seem to really enjoy the day. And I was like, yeah, sure. And it went into a drawer for 10 years. 10 years it took me to get back to that place. But I guess I'm just telling you that because it's, you know, we, we do that. We take these journeys in, in, in leaps and bounds and there's gaps and things like that, but it always comes back. And uh, in 2011, in 2011, I uh, went traveling in South America. I had been working in animation. I'm, I'm an ex-animator. I've come clean now, I'm no longer doing that. <laughs> And I say that with a bit of a, a bit of jest, but in fact, the reason I got so depressed in working in film and television was I figured out I was kind of making content that they could squeeze the sandwich commercials between to sell things to children. That's what oh. I was doing. That was my contribution to the world. And I thought, this is, I can't do this anymore. So My Little Pony was my final job. And animating four horse legs is a lot more difficult than two legs. <laughs> Twice the work, right? So I thought, yeah, no, I'm out of here. This is, I'm done. My Little Pony was the nail in the coffin. And I went to stop. <laughs> Damn horses. And go, Climb up a ladder and read a book. How do I do that? Uh, I, yeah, anyway. They don't pay you enough to do that many legs. So I went to South America and I decided I would let South America tell me what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, or at least the next chapter. And everybody I met, uh, they knew herbal medicine because it's just the medicine in other countries, right? You go to South America, it's just normal for them to go, oh, you got a sore throat, try this, you know, rip it off the side of the road, or you got this, you need this, whatever. And, and these were people in my cohort that knew all this stuff, blown away. I was one of those people that looked out and saw green before. Does anyone feel that a little bit? Like I would just see a sea of green and now I can, I can tap into those plants. But, I got back to uh, Vancouver and quickly found this program at Pacific Rim College. And we put our stuff in storage and we moved over and I started the program. And yeah, that's where I think I started with saying I never left. Right? And that's kind of where I am now. Um, that's my kind of resume for all that stuff. But then of course there's other forms of resume that we don't get to use for that in this world. And, a psychedelic resume would be one of those things, right? So I, my psychedelic re resume starts when I'm about 12 or 13 years old, in fact. So really young, uh, I sought out these things and I, 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 I took them unceremoniously, I would say, you know, in a park with a friend drinking uh, orange crush or something mixed with vodka, choking down some dry mushrooms you know, then going, in, like, let's go to a movie or something ridiculous. Uh, so set and setting is a thing we'll talk about a little bit, uh, of course. But I started LSD, cannabis, psilocybin, these things, um, experimenting with them. Uh, and I, I, I say this is my initiation uh, because this is around the age uh, in traditional cultures where we're using psychedelic medicines that you would initiate your children, right? Your, your, the passage, the rite of passage into adulthood would be a psychedelic experience. So I managed to do that. I feel like the concurrent use of that alongside with alcohol and cigarettes was a bit of a race. And thankfully the psychedelics won and they told me, hey, 
this other stuff is not serving you as well. So maybe move away from that. And so I went with that. And it's been serving me very well ever since. Re reorienting and finding the true path. As a child, I experienced a fair bit of trauma uh, in my family household. It was not a very calm household. As I mentioned, there was alcoholism, narcissistic abuse, and things like that. So that was perfect. It was a perfect setup to get me to where I am today. And I'm very grateful for every single thing that happened to me. Uh, as I said, it, it changed me and it turned me into me, or who I am to be. Right? So that's cool. So have I told you enough about myself? It sounds like I like to talk about myself a little bit, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with it? Um, I'm going to keep going on myself. There's much more to talk about. <laughs> Oh my goodness, ego. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so I, I'm, I'm incredibly empathic, I think, because of the way I grew up. Uh, I'm a curious observer of myself and the world around me, which has led me to dive deeply into all these things. Um, and let's turn the camera on. Uh, that way. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, that works for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I kept noticing when I was. Sorry about that, everybody online. <laughs> okay, where am I here? So uh, yeah, very curious about myself, the world around me. Um, that led me to digging into esoteric philosophy as well and, and digging into mystery school stuff of old, if you're familiar with that stuff. Um, and uh, finally a shoemaker. Weird, right? <laughs> I just started making shoes. Whoa. Yeah, can yeah. you see those online, folks? <laughs> not that flexible, obviously. <laughs> Still not a yogi. yogi. <laughs> <laughs> Still not quite the yogi. <laughs> that was pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got, a, I got a, some moral support in the front. I love it. All right, so let's uh, let's continue on here. I, I, I've noticed my first transition, dude. It just it was a fade. It's supposed to crumple like a piece of paper. Yeah, I've got fancier transitions, I think. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, what are we doing here? Let's talk about it. Oh, all my fonts are wrong, too. Oh, that's such a bummer. There's so pretty the fonts that I chose. Okay, we're going to have a very basic presentation today. <laughs> and you're going to see me cringing every time I go to the next page. Like, oh, it doesn't look as neat as it did. Uh, but what are we doing here? We're talking about using medicinal herbs and mushrooms to support the exploration of, of us, of you, right? of all of us. Um, and, oh, that's really funky. Okay, this is, <laughs> yeah, oh, darn. Okay, well, I'm going to send you my slides so that you know they're <laughs> damn pretty. Uh, but yeah, we're going to look at a very ugly version my slideshow here. <laughs> oh man, oh that's it's bad. so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that your online folks can't see much. Okay, so let's let's pretend I chose some very nice fonts and designed this page. <laughs> this is something I came up with and it was purely based on the fact that when people do these kinds of things, they've got little things like this and I thought I need a thing, so I'm gonna create a thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for those that can't see it quite well online, you'll just have to- uh, I'll read it out. Just read it out. Yeah, okay. That's normally like the number one thing you don't do when you're presenting is read slides, but these guys are good <laughs> yeah. for those online. That's kind of true, that's kind of true. It's like any anyone who, who knows anything about presenting, if you go and you watch someone reading slides, it's pretty. So the Oakworth 5Ds directive, uh, my first directive, deep program. We wanna to look to rid ourselves of limiting thoughts and behaviors uh, and accept change as a welcome gift in our life. Uh, when I first wrote that, I realized it was like, or when I first said it out loud, it sounds like a welcome gift. That's not what I was going for. A welcome <laughs> gift in our life. Uh, so we want to deprogram, we want to deconstruct our maladapted perceptual framework. And that's, that's a little phrase I came up with myself um, because humans are really, really good at maladapting um, to to things that happen to them. So uh, we can take a physical exploration of that and say, you know, somebody who they damaged, say their hip or their ankle or something, and I don't need to go to a doctor. And then 40 years down the road, you, know, you see that person walking down the street. It started with a little whip. Like, 
slowly adapted to this kind of really, really, you know, uh, maladjusted or maladapted gait. So we maladapt to our traumas as well. Right? We maladapt to the things that happen to us. Uh, but we say, oh, no, I'm good. I'll keep going. And this is where we end up with all sorts of syndromes and whatnot, um, packages of, of, of different things that we struggle with. So who am I really, truly, and honestly determined is the, the third D to create lasting change, reorienting myself to new ways of being a desire to show up and move past your self-made limitations. And then the final one is dedication to self. Uh, I'm worth the effort despite what my maladapted ego tells me. Um, this is not something that is commonplace understanding in my experience of talking to people. Uh, one of my favorite things to, to say to people is, uh, or ask actually, ask audiences, like, have you ever just said, I love myself out loud to yourself by yourself? Has anyone done that? It's pretty weird. <laughs> I was so uncomfortable by myself, with myself. That's strange, right? Like, we're not doing that enough. We're not saying that we love ourselves enough. We're not digging into that. So these are the five, Oakworth 5Ds. Uh, you, can, you can memorize those. There'll be a skill testing question on that. Um, protocols. We have to kind of get this stuff out of the way, I think, because a lot of people are unfamiliar with the protocols that have been followed so far. Um, the Fadiman Protocol, James Fadiman wrote a book, uh, and the title is eluding me at the moment, but it was written back in the 70s. And this is the, uh, I, I suppose you could call him the inventor of microdosing. I have a little joke that I invented microdosing uh, because I literally stumbled upon this, this whole recipe. When I first started studying herbal medicine, I had 10 grams of mushrooms, I had 100 capsules, and I thought, well, let's, let's formulate to mitigate some of the issues that you have taking mushrooms and I happened to just land on this one tenth of a gram idea uh, and then three years later my friend called me up and said hey we're doing a thing and I was like what do you mean he's like the thing that people are doing in Silicon Valley and all these other places and I was like wow that's really cool we invented something cool and of course we didn't invent anything <laughs> uh, but that sort of you know playground idea where you invent something but this is uh, the microdosing protocol of James Fadiman and it's a three-day cycle do a dose day, you wait for two days and you do a dose day, rinse and repeat. That's basically the setup and you take a reset <clears throat> at the end of your, maybe your four week uh, or two month uh, cycle. And then you take a few days off or maybe a few weeks. Um, of course, there's Paul Stamets um, protocol as well, which is more of a, a five day on, two day off thing. And he calls it a stack. Stack is just a fancy word for I'm taking it with stuff, right? So, um, he adds niacin uh, with the flush. Has anyone had a niacin flush experience before? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't go super great for me. <laughs> I was actually working at the supplement store and had to run to the back room and just like, rip my face off. It was terrible. Uh, and I was like, people do this for fun? Like, what's going on? Just to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe to get the job. Um, what's that? What is that? Niacin? It's, vitamin D, I think. Pardon me? It's a vitamin D. It's a, yeah, it's a vitamin, uh, but it just happens to really flex the blood system and, and kind of move it around. I don't know, Malcolm, do you know any more about it? Like, yeah, it just opens up your capillaries. And yeah. You just, like, you just feel this, this flush, uh, oh, like, okay. blood flow, but with it, like, heat, just like, everything is kind of coming to the surface. But so you can imagine, you like, know. oh, sorry. No, they do sell this uh, flush. The flush version. Yeah. Okay. I was more joking. Right, right. Well, imagine what it feels like when blood's rushing back into a body part that got cut off. It's kind of like that, coupled with heat and, and a lot, maybe some itching and things like that. Did you ever? Yeah, I just think if you want a really uh, cool experience. So I did uh, about 100 drinks of milk from the future mushroom. Okay. And then 500 milligrams of niacin. Yeah. And then you go in the water, like river or whatever, to go yeah. under water. It's like, wow. You're, you're Somebody write that down. Because you're, you're getting really heated up. Like when you're under water, it's almost like you can hold your breath on. Oh, that's interesting. Everything's way more intense. So if you ever want to get 
<laughs> okay, yeah, so for the people online, uh, we, we just had a, a volunteer. Uh, yeah, vacation. If you want a, a vacation, uh, <laughs> for an instant, for an instant vacation, spa half an hour, take 500 milligrams of niacin. How much milligrams of golden teacher? 100 milligrams of golden teacher, go underwater and you'll breathe forever. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, right? <laughs> you'll feel, you'll feel like you can breathe forever. That's not, we don't want to get in trouble here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, well, thank you for that. Wear your plugs. I'll need that too myself. But, uh, this is just another uh, image showing those schedules there. So before I get into this, actually, I wanted to ask uh, you guys, what you maybe heard or what you're thinking or, or some some ideas about what microdosing can do for you. Like what have you what have you guys heard? What are some of the things? Help with depression. Yeah. That's heard that. Reprogram the, mind. Reprogram the mind, opening up neural pathways. Yeah. Anyone else? It just helps me feel connected to everything around me. So I'm not single, but more connected to the day and the people around right right more connected to the day more connected to people around you we're all connected by the way everything is connected i don't i'm not going to try to convince you of that but <laughs> you will eventually get to that point if you're not there yet uh we are all connected everything is connected and feeling disconnected is a, is a very prevalent feeling in our society because i think a lot of our society is designed to disconnect right and and connect us up to something else but Again, that's a tangent that I got to <laughs> be careful of. So what are some of the things more focused is something I hear all the time. And certainly that's an experience that people have feeling stuck. I think people feel stuck and, and need a, a, a way around, a work around. Stamina, sometimes just to get through the day, right? Anxiety, depression, we've heard, PTSD. So these are some of the really um, basic things that you hear people treating with microdosing, but yeah, just feeling connected to yourself, your body, to your friends, to your environment, right? A lot of that is, is greatly enhanced by, by the mushroom. Oh, this was in a beautiful royal, it's called royal signage. <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, and, and there's a head. <laughs> For all you people online, uh, I hope you caught up with that because at the beginning I was mentioning how this was the online people got them, right? I'm not used to this devil thing. It's fun. <laughs> and people are help pro oh, I'm getting some suggestions from my question. Problem solving? Absolutely. Helps process trauma. Absolutely. And mushrooms, you know, we were talking about microdosing today, but of course we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Microdosing is something that I'll Make a brief mention at some point of, but I'm not all in the camp of microdosing. I'm not that guy, right? I'm not the, let's just do CBD, right? Because that was the big thing when, when cannabis was like, well, let's get rid of the high and then let's, it's all great, right? Well, maybe the high is part of it, right? The high, it's a terrible word for, uh, maybe it isn't, hang on. I've just convinced myself it's not. High level of, you know, high level view, right? We could go with that. I think I tend to just go with the, the association with what we, we, we treat it as like a stoner kind of thing. Like, oh, you don't see it. Huh? Well, this isn't what this is about. This is about helping ourselves. And herbs uh, can support that journey, right? So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so on the, on the, he's talking about on the, on the subject of hero dosing on bigger, larger doses, uh, I just kind of, randomly said, you know, who, who's with me on this? Has anyone had a, a bigger, larger experience? And I had a much older gentleman in the audience say, well, you know, the first time I got mushrooms, I thought you were supposed to just eat the bag. Oh, yeah. I think I'm in a room with people that don't just eat the bag. I think I can, I think I can you know, safely say that, but this was a long time ago. And this was you know, like, how would you know? Someone but okay, sold you mushrooms, just take them, okay. So he went and took 25 grams for his first experience. Ooh. Yeah, and then this is some other bad advice, eat till you're high. 
there's so much uh, lost in that statement, right? Where's the nuance? Where's the context? I don't know, but <laughs> eat till you're high. Well, am I high yet? I, I have a story about that after if we get to it, <laughs> you can remind me. Um, so, so yeah, so we're talking now, I wanna get into talking a bit about the combinations and vibrations and synergy. Of course, herbs interact in a multitude of ways and uh, that's the, the cool thing about them, right? We're, we're excited because this plant does this, that, and the other thing. It's not just a one trick pony, like our, our, our pharmaceutical industry, right? That's a magic bullet as a single target. So plants have these broad spectrum uh, actions and things like that that we can, we can uh, capitalize on. That's a bad word, I don't like it, but <laughs> you know what I mean, right? We can utilize rather and, uh, and utilize it to our benefit. So a relatively unknown um, fact is that, that these plants are, are often used in totally different ways than we used to hear. And you can combine them in different ways and really maximize the formula. So when we formulate, we try to get as much crossover as possible. Right now, you can imagine if a formula is going to have five plants in it and you're dealing with a complex human, you, know, you want some crossover with the different actions in the different Time and testing, of course, results in how those qualities are, are possessed by the herbs. We can kind of tune into them. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Matthew Wood uh, as a herbalist, but I believe he taught himself purely through like trial and error, like, just tasting things in, in nature. But we can combine uh, these herbs and in, in, in lots of different ways. We can get the entourage effect. Is that, if anyone's heard of that, that kind of terminology before, <laughs> But like I said, quite a departure from pharmaceutical drugs. So we want to combine to maximize benefit. Selection of, of, of herbs and, and benefits should always be kind of considered and looked at. And we list them out that way. And we kind of, you can draw little lines across like what you're trying to achieve. But essentially, uh, we want to blend into a complex formula. We're complex humans. We have lots going on with us. Um, so self-testing, that's the one cool thing about herbal medicine. Uh, there's not a lot of doctors that can try their own medicine and, and, and tap into that and see what it's doing, right? So we can do that. And in fact, we're going to do that right now. Uh, we're all gonna try my first herb up here uh, and that's rhodiola. Who's familiar with rhodiola? If you really don't want rhodiola, let me know and I won't give it to you. But uh, so when it comes to this kind of, self-testing, I called it uh, herbal medicine, it's embodied wisdom, right? Where we can tune into these things, we can take them into our bodies and we can learn how to read what's going on in our bodies. So before I give this out, I'm actually gonna kind of give you a little run down and I'd like you to, to kind of take this on and, 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 and utilize the, the information. So after I give you your drop, I'd like everybody to kind of just uh, tune into themselves for a minute. So I, and ask you to maybe even close your eyes if that feels good for you. Um, and I'd like you to tune into anything and everything that's happening. Uh, that could be an itch under your foot. It could be an image of a girl playing with a wolf. It could be the color blue, right? A lot of people have these, these interesting experiences when we try herbs and then we do the feedback. So I'm gonna give it to everybody and we're gonna tune into ourselves for a minute and then I'm gonna ask for some feedback if that's cool with you. Um, do you want to start? Yeah. Is it anybody's gonna do? Is it just gonna drop on the hand like we did uh, the first time? What's that? Uh, this is rhodiola. Yeah. So rhodiola is an adaptogen. It's it, it is taken to sort of mitigate stress, the stress response, and 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 handle a lot of that kind of. Um, flexing of that system. So it manages it and down, down regulates it, I suppose you could say, but it is very upward and outward moving. So it sort of gets blood into the head and, and gets the blood moving. Um, Rhodiol is one of my favorite adaptogens for, for people that are not able to get going in the morning kind of thing. It's like one of those ones. Um, and I really, really like it for, uh, for that reason. It's a very powerful adaptogen herb. So. The idea here is that 
that herbs have energies, they have vibrations and things like that. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that uh, in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. So uh, to get back to adaptogens, ro um, rhodiola is an adaptogen. And we employ adaptogens for the very specific reason uh, that they sort of do a lot of wonderful stuff for us that, that sort of broad spectrum, you could say. There are some specific indications for lots of these adaptogens, but the non-specific thing they do is sort of raise vitality from the cellular, cellular level up. Right? So they're kind of making everything work better. They're doing a lot of good stuff for us. Um, when we enter into this practice, um, we're working with the nervous system. Um, psilocybin is, is a nervous system anti-inflammatory, right? So that's pretty powerful in its own right. And we can supplement and we can augment that, that action uh, with things like adaptogens, right? We're all, I'd say, I think I can safely say we've all experienced a fair bit of stress in the last few years. Whether or not that's solely based on the global thing or just in your own lives, I think it's both, right, for everybody. We all have a lot of different things that we're dealing with. So adaptogens are a wonderful, uh, a wonderful way to, to augment this practice. Cautions and contraindications, of course. Um, it's important to know your sensitivities. And if you don't know them, um, you always want to start slow and low with these things, right? So again, we're drop dosing with herbs and we're, we're tasting them and we're checking in with ourselves. Has everybody got a dose now? I just realized I talked right past that. So I'm just gonna ask you to just kind of sit with it for just a minute. Would anyone like one more drop just to kind of tune back into it? We <laughs> get maybe a couple more drops. You folks at home, if you have rhodiola in your house, please take note. <laughs> So tune in, feel your body, feel the sensations that are in your feet, in your legs, in your back, in your head. If there's a tingling, itching, random sensations. If you see colors, if you see an image. Uh, I used to have one student who would get an elaborate tale to tell a five minute story every time you get a doctor. It's wild, <laughs> super cool. Oh, I forgot mine. I'll have to get one too. Ganoleptic session, number one. Almost through it. Thank you. Ooh. So nice. One of my favorite adaptogens. I think I say that about every herb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Never done a <laughs> We're allowed to have more than one great favorite. That's good. <laughs> then I like them. Um, okay. Is that enough time? What's that? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to point that the It does. Oh, very cool. I know it's a mountain car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I knew it was a mountain herd, but I just didn't know how far it went down. Very yeah, cool. It's, it's so that's been wild in Alberta. There's also uh, a little domestically. Okay. There's the Alberta Rolling Towards Association. Wow. I must like, meet this association. Yeah. So yeah, sounds like, like a good bunch. We stay at Rodeo Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Rodeolers. Rodeolers. I will and Rodeolers. I love it. All right, Rodeolers, if you're out online listening, you got to meet. I love your herb. I love, I'm a big fan. Um, okay, so. Yeah, some, some herbs interrupt uh, medications. So of course, right, anyone that's taking medications, I, I kind of think that most people that are taking a medication kind of know that they should check in with this. But if you know, right, you want to check in, make sure that the herbs that you're experimenting with don't interrupt the processing of your herbs. And I talk mostly about liver herbs, right, like psili psilibum, uh, milk thistle, psilibum marianum, things like that, that clear the liver out. Um, you want to take obviously away from, from your medication. Levels of sensitivity. 
Um, you'd be amazed what a drop dose can do to some people. I've had students that are like, wow, they almost have to go home after one drop. They're like, wow, that's it's over the top for me. It's, it's setting me into another, another atmosphere. And you're kind of like, wow, okay. But in my experience, this is not uh, just a random you know, uh, person. This is a fair few people. Um, some people have completely adverse reaction too, where they'll be like, everyone tastes sweet and someone goes salty, right? And that's okay too. But that's why we have to kind of learn ourselves a little bit as well in this whole process, right? So it's not just about the herbs, it's about us and the herbs and our interaction with them. Dangerous interactions, things like uh, hypericum, St. John's word, um, specifically with psilocybin, right? We don't necessarily want those two in the same uh, combination if those levels are, are, are uh, appreciated. You can, you can maybe think about how you're gonna modulate those, those things. And St. John's word certainly can be taken with uh, psilocybin, but if you're on a large dose, and maybe you're on SSRIs or something like this, there's, there's a cocktail there that could be uh, difficult and, and challenging for people. Maybe pushing you into a little bit of serotonin syndrome, right? So we wanna do our due diligence not to, uh, not to overdo things like that as well. Psilocybin fits into the lock and key mechanism of the 5-HT2A receptor, also known as the serotonin receptor, right? So, so that's the danger there potentially of getting too much serotonin between the synapses. I should check in on questions here because that's something that we should do, right? Uh, rhodiola, the concentration of the tincture. Good question. What is our concentration? Uh, of this rhodiola. I didn't list it. Okay. It's, it's unlisted. This is proprietary. I'm afraid. Next question. Um, I have the dried bark and boil it down. Yeah, I think you can just decoct. You can just decoct rhodiola. Absolutely. Uh, is the drop of rhodiola in homeopathic quantity? In fact, no, it is not. Uh, I have a limited understanding, well, no, I have an understanding, but a limited experience with homeopathics, uh, but this is a, it's still a, a, a dose that's got physiological components, right? It's still got active constituents and things like that. Homeopathic is more, it's based on dilutions. The further away from that uh, thing that you have is the, the more uh, efficacious it is. Apparently that's my understanding. That's my limited understanding. No more homeopathic questions. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so complementary versus crossover. Um, herbs accomplish different tasks by, or similar tasks by different routes, right? So we can take a, a nervine herb that sedates us via some pathway, and then we can take another herb that calms us down, but through a totally different mechanism, right? And this example I use for this is cava cava. And we're going to try a little bit of cava in a minute. Uh, but before we do, uh, who's seen Kappa sold as a sleep aid? Yeah, a few people, right? Um, I have my suspicions as to why, because I don't think it makes you sleepy, but it's a wonderful anti-anxiety, probably the best herbal anti-anxiety in my pharmacopoeia. Um, so if you're anxious and that's why you're not sleeping, Kappa Kappa will help you get to sleep. It won't knock you out though. And I have, uh, I have it on good authority that if you are nervous about an event or a job interview or doing a talk in front of a bunch of people in a random kitchen that you've never been to. <laughs> Kava Kava can be great. I haven't had any yet, but I will in a minute, obviously. Uh, but yeah, Kava Kava is a wonderful anti-anxiety. It just cuts through a lot of that um, kind of haywire energy and, and calms, calms the whole nervous system in a lovely way. Um, it's important, important to, do, to understand your desired outcome. You know, what are you aiming to do? And when it came to formulating for some of the, um, uh, the, the uh, supplements that I'm selling, it was all about kind of, let's figure out what are, what's the archetypal humans, right? What are the sort of basic sets of like, I don't want to say pathology, but you know, things that we deal with on a daily basis. Um, so I formulated one formula, as I said, for people that were low functioning nervous system, high functioning nervous system, uh, one was for the kind of more adventurous type that's mountain biking and, and you know, cross country doing things and stuff. Uh, it's the cross country movement of all these things, right? It's the, like, you can cross country walk, I see those all the time. Uh, so yeah, um, that's, that's a, a formula. That's one of my favorite ones. It's most, most well-rounded, I would say. And I came up with another one that was purely based on uh, 
I was, I dreamt it up. They asked me, they said, can we have another formula? I said, sure. Uh, and I made a really trippy formula. And uh, I'll give you that heads up. Uh, afterwards, when we look at the products, um, Celestial is not your average microdose. Uh, it's got blue lotus, it's got Syrian root, it has a bit of cannabis, and it's super funky and great to do nothing to. So if you have nothing on your plate and you got nothing to do and you don't want to do anything, <laughs> Celestial is for you. Um, if you take that and try to do anything, I'm sorry, I gave you the caveat. So, okay. Uh, where am I here? Too much crossover can have undesirable effects. Right, so who's taken Panax ginseng before in the room? Yeah, how did you find that? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, Yeah, first, and then almost like the mm -hmm. um, so it's really interesting because other kinds of things are like, 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 wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's interesting. They tell us when we're training, um, Panax Quinkle or Panax uh, Ginseng, they say that the demographic that you don't give that to is a young woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we don't mind me calling you young or anything, but. Um, but yeah, this, the, the, it's really, we reserve, I reserve that for kind of the elderly folks and the aging people uh, that I see. Um, so let's say, you know, you're, we're back to this microdosing thing and, and you, you don't know, right? And you take some of the ginseng because you think I want to be stimulated today, but then you take my, my supplement that has the cola in it as well. That's going to push you, I think, over the top. It's not going to feel too good, anxiety inducing, things like that. If you add a coffee on top of that, Okay, now we're kind of getting into really uncomfortable territory. And I've done it, I've done it all. So I'm gonna tell you <laughs> from experience, uh, coffee on top of ginseng on top of cola, it, it equals kind of a nervous breakdown in, in ways, <laughs> at least temporary. Uh, so, so don't do that to yourself. Look for anything that's gonna cross uh, and, and have uh, sort of a compound effect. And we're utilizing space, as I said. So we don't need two stimulants in there. If we're, if we're down, we've got our one stimulant. Now let's, let's think about the other things we're trying to do and trying to accomplish. And where are we here? Supporting the journey, of course, with, uh, with, with mushrooms and things as well as herbs. Um, and I'm not gonna spend too much <clears throat> time on mushrooms, but I wanted to use this section to kind of get into uh, talking about Therapeutic dosing versus drop dosing and vibration energetics, all that kind of stuff. So therapeutic dosing, of course, um, is what it sounds like. We take five to 7.5 mil of, of some kind of tincture or some kind of formula. This is a, a registered dose and it has the, the desired effects. Drop dosing, on the other hand, is a totally different. It's a departure from that entirely. Neither uh, is it an exclusive way to practice herbal medicine. Some people practice purely with drop doses. And that's the wild thing. Uh, I've seen it work. I've seen people give these drop dose formulas um, and, and the patients come back and it works for them. Um, I'm one of the people that like a therapeutic dose um, and I like a fairly substantial dose. So when I take herbs, I take a lot of herbs. Um, I do drop dose still, but for various reasons. And some people drop dose just to get the energetic of something. So what do I mean by energetics? The herbs have energetics right they're hot or cold or dry or acrid or or whatever right? there's lots of different um lots of di different energetics great intel for ssms i'm going to do that i'm just going to stop and read to myself for a minute and then continue because uh, that's how i have to do it um vibration though what are, what are we talking about when we get into talking about vibration um i wanted to bring up this guy he's an interesting cat um, and you think well, that's jarring and totally not related, but in fact it is. Uh, Walter Russell, this is an interesting guy, um, wrote a book. Uh, he's one of these kind of mad geniuses that was kind of relegated to their corners and ignored. Uh, so I love looking at those people. They always have really interesting stuff to say. Um, kind of like a Tesla character, right? Where he ends up sort of bankrupt and poor and nobody really wants to acknowledge what they've done. But this gentleman did a really interesting um, study in a book called the universal one talking about the one force that exists and it's divided into two magnetism 
and electric, uh, electricity and magnetism. It's electromagnetics, right? It's the same idea. And it's repulsion and attraction. These are just two things that go in and out, right? And, uh, and what, what I wanted to talk about here is everything is a vibration, right? We're in a universe where um, there's no color and there's no sound, right? We're assigning color and sound to everything we see outside of us. But you're not actually looking at me. You're looking at your version of me, right? And I don't know what that looks like. It could be filtered through your perceptual framework and whatever that is. Maybe you had an experience with a short guy in a black hat, striped shirt one time, and that freaked you out. I don't know, hamburger, remember him? <laughs> um, I don't know, but right, you might have a, you might see me up here going rubble, 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 and that's all you hear, I don't know. Um, but everything is a vibration. Everything is a, a standing wave, right? We're these standing wave vibrations, and, and we're, we're interacting with other vibratory fields, right? So that's, that's the setup. This is actually very scientific, believe it or not. I wanted to drop Walter Russell in because I really want people to, to find out about this gentleman. He's an interesting character. He wrote this in uh, One Magnetic Light of Mind. It says, <clears throat> I'm going to do the read thing on the slide for you folks. Uh, Future generations of enlightened men will cease thinking of this electric universe as being matter and substance. They will know it for what it is, which is motion only. The idea of substance has passed out of our thinking and simulation of substance by motion will have taken its place. Mankind will comprehend his mind unity with the universe and mind. He will know it for he will know his body for what it is, merely an instrument for creating form images of mind thinking. Whoa, that sounds fun, right? Uh, this was written over a hundred years ago, I believe, or something like that. But uh, he has lots more thought-provoking stuff in there. But I wanted to bring Walter uh, Walter Russell uh, into it because just like other herbs, psilocybin mushrooms have their own vibration and. What we're really doing is we're combining and working with vibrations, right? Herbs have colors, herbs have scents, they have qualities, right? Energetic qualities, and those are all vibratory fields interacting. So when we combine these various agents to create complementary frequencies, the new vibrations generally inform the overall experience. And I say be creative and take note. So what are you trying to do? Like what, what are you trying to accomplish with your microdosing practice? Uh, what herbs do you know about and, and what is your journey involving? So putting these, all these things together and saying, well, I want to have this kind of experience. Uh, psilocybin itself is, is kind of anyone who's, who's had a substantial dose of it or even enough to kind of notice it knows that we become a bit of a raw nerve, if you will. We're kind of, we're, we're burying ourselves completely. We're exposed, but we're super sensitive. Right, so the wrong word can throw us into a bad place or, or whatever, the wrong kind of <clears throat> environment. But we can utilize this as well uh, in, in the right way. So we can take the vibration of the plant that we love and we can bring that in and now we're super sensitive to it. So that vibratory kind of sensation that that herb brings is gonna be way more pronounced. It's gonna be way more um, um, flexed in, in, the, in the system. You can notice uh, what happens. So. We can utilize this and we can we can dream big i think what are we trying to do like i said uh if you're really tired and things like that and you're trying to get some energy for the day like i said and add an energy herb in with this this, this vibration and boom you've got something that's going to carry you through the day a little bit and there's lots of of virtues of herbs we're not quite there yet though so let's jump back for a moment <clears throat> So I have here, uh, when we say spirit, we're, um, we're referencing the innate qualities of a herb, right? And we talk about uh, tincturing things, we're literally capturing the spirit, we call it spirits. Um, <clears throat> but all is in motion, everything is a unique standing wave, and everything has a resonant frequency. So even our, our crystals and our rocks and things that we bring in, all those have vibratory uh, fields that are gonna add to this this whole experience as well of microdosing. Uh, the new vibrations do gently inform the experience, as I said, and it kind of washes over the whole thing. And the same logic can be apply, applied in larger doses, right? So if we're going to go for that, or maybe not hero dose, but that bigger dose, rather, I had a question earlier, it was a really good question, in fact. Somebody asked me, 
would I just take that whole bottle of, of capsules if I want a macrodose experience? And I said, that would be a terrible waste of your money. Yeah, and I really do think it would. Um, first of all, you're gonna get too much of the herbs and maybe, um, you know, anyone who's taken cava, if you take my formula with cava in it, you might get so chill that you just don't do anything that day and that wasn't the point. Um, or maybe it knocks you out because you're, yeah, free of anxiety. Um, where was I going with that? I had a thought and it was hinged on another thought. <laughs> And now it's disappearing. That's okay. Um, yeah, so larger dose days. So, so rather than take a whole capsule pill bottle and throw it down, just get the herbs themselves, right? We can, we can start to play around as we're doing with the sort of analeptic idea. And we can start to tune into the herbs and start training our own perceptual framework to, to tune in and have a greater sense of what these herbs are actually doing in our bodies, right? So, so rather than dump them all down your, your gullet, and waste your money, uh, pick up some tinctures, get some single herbs, uh, things that you're drawn to. Maybe you've heard of a plant that, that excites you or you've heard of someone else talking about them. Start to pick these things up, take them home, play around with them, tune into them. Um, I'm gonna get everyone to tune into uh, Piper Mephisticum now, which is Cava Cava, my favorite uh, anti-anxiety as I mentioned earlier. And uh, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, it has a bit of an anodyne numbing effect on the tongue. So you aren't uh, having an adverse reaction and you're going to be just fine. Um, but yeah, let's, let's have a little bit of kava. And once it gets around, I'll, I'll give you a second to kind of tune into it again. What's that? That's right. I'm trying to bring you back down. After She's copped on to my, my, my methods here. So in, in talking about these larger doses, um, you know, we, we can, we want to wait for appropriate times. That's another thing that, that I just like to slide into these things. It's like, you never have to rush into this, right? If you buy your microdose formula, don't feel like you got to take it tomorrow. Um, I'm a big fan of waiting until the right time. And I think it's important to do. Uh, we can all, of course, we can go too far on the other end and wait forever. We don't want to do that either. Uh, but, but these things prompt uh, the right time, the right space. Uh, microdosing is a little different because we can sort of take that to remedy some of the issues that we're dealing with uh, versus a, a macrodose, which is going to be a moment we have to set aside in time. Um, but yeah, uh, both are equally valid at the right time. Uh, I think the microdosing has more applicability on a daily basis, though. So, so I talked about the amplification quality already. I talked about the herbs themselves as far as the energetics go. But what is your constitution? That's also something that you want to tune into, right? So how many people here run hot? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Hot, hot, hot. How many people run a little bit cold? Yeah? How about, how about the just cold hands and feet folks? <laughs> right? We get that too. There's all manner of different things. So knowing what our constitution is is really, really helpful uh, when it comes to this kind of pro um, practice as well. And I'm sort of talking to you as if you're going to go out and, and do this by yourself. Of course, you can work with people, right? That's, uh, that's equally acceptable. You, uh, you should always reach out if you don't feel comfortable doing this on your own and, and work with somebody. I work with a number of people on their microdosing schedules and we check in once in a while and I listen to the things that they're telling me and I help them kind of interpret what's going on. Um, and, and that's great. Like some people don't want to do this alone and I think that's absolutely okay. But I'm, I'm here to tell you it is well within your scope to do this, right? And that's, that's the thing I try to get my patients to understand is it's not about me holding the information and giving it over people. It's about instilling sort of confidence in people that they can do this on, on their own. Right? If, uh, if 11 or 13 year old me can, can start this, right? At least with a proper education and moving into this with some intent, um, we can do it. We can do it well. Uh, where was I here? Okay. So, yeah, so knowing your own constitution is, is important. Knowing, so that if, you're, if you're a hot person, then you want to take cooling herbs and things like that, right? This is some 
what I'm getting at. So I'm turning you all into mini herbalists, right? As we speak, you're getting your, your herbal medicine training. Um, I just realized I talked through that organoleptic <laughs> session. I didn't work this out of my head, but I'm talking the whole time that I wanted you guys to tune in. Uh, was anyone able to tune in to themselves as I flapped my gums up here, wagged my chin? Yeah, you were able to tune in. Um, what's some of the experiences? Did anyone have anything to share? I think I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I find comments so pleasant. Like mm. it's like, it's been a while since you have a moment. It's like it's like centering. Nice. Yeah, very, very And what is the, so what's your, what's your experience on that? Those are good descriptors, yeah. good energetic qualities, right? So, yeah, if you're uh, if you're not so cool, right, and your energy is all wiry, Kava would be a really good choice. So, let's take a look at. So, what herbs should we choose? So, I'm going to take you through uh, a list of herbs that I employ for for my supplements here, and and we'll talk a bit about <clears throat> the reasons why. So, chamomile. Chamomile is that, that mighty, mighty powerful plant teacher that got relegated to calming tea bag. Um, and I'm here to tell you, if you try the tincture, it's a little bit more, bam, like, wow. Uh, I used to use it purely to kind of, I called it um, a shoehorn for sleeping. Slide me back into sleep really nicely. Anyone use shoehorns anymore? Yeah, I yeah. actually do. <laughs> but yeah. Chamomile is that shoehorn for sleep, um, but it's a nerve. It's a lovely, relaxing, mild sedative. It's antispasmodic. So if, we're, if our, our sinews and, and our body is tight and, and, and not calming down, antispasmodic activity, anti-inflammatory. So an anti-ulcer, right? Calming the guts down. What are some of the things that can happen when we're, when we're journeying with psychedelics or with psilocybin specifically? You know, some gut issues and things like that. So antacid is wonderful and, and calming just generally in that area. Passion flower, of course, passion flower is, is not just one of the most psychedelic and gorgeous looking flowers, but it actually has a lot of wonderful properties that go hand in hand again with dosing um, with psilocybin, hypnotic sedative nerve on. That all sounds wonderful if you're, you know, again, high functioning nervous system. Um, it's antispasmodic as well. It's anxiolytic. Yeah, be, be a scientist in your own life. That's exactly it. That was a comment there on the, online. Um, anxiolytic, calming anxiety, bringing it down to a tolerable level. It's anodized, so it's actually painkilling in a way. And, you know, pain can be uh, registered. Emotional pain can register just as much as physical pain. We can have emotional pain to the point where we're in, in, bad, in a bad place, in dire straits. And so passion flower is a lovely herb that can, uh, that can kill pain as well. Uh, but what else does it do? It, it's a mild MAO inhibitor, a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. Monoamine oxidase is the thing that breaks down um, these, these classic psychedelics in our gut, right? So if we can add a little bit in, we can kind of stretch that formula a little bit. We can flex that psilocybin a bit more and, and have it run for perhaps a little bit longer as well. These turn like pages before, it's so cool. Aww. I am gonna send you the, <laughs> I really or I'll do a video and I'll, I'll post that. Uh, neuroprotective, so lion's mane, that's another one that, this is the one of course that, that, that many people are talking about. Paul Stamets uh, mentions the, combined effect of, of psilocybin and lion's mane, really getting the, the nerve growth factor going, stimulating new uh, neuronal connections and growth and, and supporting those processes. You know, one of the things that I, I don't mention in here is um, 
Has anyone seen this uh, graphic of two circles and data points and the, the, the normal waking brain and the psilocybin brain? Has anyone seen that? Um, you look it up, I'm sure, or I can maybe even look it up after this, but what it shows is something that looks like a few lines across a sphere. And the next one is looks like a ball of twine that's like really, really detailed. And, and what they're doing is they're showing how um, with psilocybin, these, these sort of disparate non-communicative parts of the brain now start to funnel toward each other and, and connect. And they, they actually allow us some insight, maybe even into say walled off traumas. Uh, a walled off trauma is not unlike a foreign body, right? Um, and you can say, and your body goes, well, we can't do this. So it encapsulates it with a bunch of you know, fats and verse, uh, various components, and it just protects your body from it. Our, our, our emotional body is much the same, right? We wall these things up, maybe even to the point where we're not able to access them again. So psilocybin is like a little drilling tunneling tool that tunnels uh, between places. It connects places up. Um, why did I launch into that? <laughs> I don't know. We'll get to the whole point of that after, I suppose. I, one of my favorite things to say is I'll do that later. And I don't know if I ever get to it. So hold me to some of these things. Please. <laughs> yeah, gonna, I got a list going. That's good. Someone needs to do it. Uh, we, uh, new neural pathways. So you talk about like, you know, you have like tracks in the brain through these kind of going these neural networks that yeah. get established. Absolutely. Patterns. Yeah. So the side is just like, it's like creating new neural network, new pathway. That's it. And, and if you think about Malcolm, he used to like groove, and I, I used to use that analogy as well for records and fact, right. like digging that deep groove in. And it's like we can skip the record, we can skip the needle out of that groove. Uh, and, and get it going in another place. You know, um, obsessive thoughts, right, are, are, you can imagine the network of neurons in an obsessive kind of thought process, they're, they're really strongly bonded, but we can start to uh, influence those bonds with psilocybin, right? And we can start to break, I think, those bonds that we're using, uh, you know, too much and start to forge new pathways that way. Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Say you have a micro stand, you want to shoot a little bit, you can find your a lot higher end and deeper. You can see maybe you use a chamomile and caution flowers and take that down sort of immediately. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that is a really great kind of, I'd say, band aid approach, right? We're sort of patchworking, like, oh shit, it took so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that certainly can happen. Um, one of the things that I figured out early on in this thing was you're always better off slow and low and adding, right? So, Actually, when I was younger, one of my friends had a, had a little bit of information for me. He said, Tony, I noticed something about you. Uh, and I want to share that you can always add, but you can never subtract. Yeah. And I was like, oh, damn, I needed that a long time ago. Uh, but that's really good information, right? We can, we can always add, but not subtract. So uh, to answer your question, yeah, that is a great approach. Like something actually like Cava Cava, chamomile tea, great, great, great. But the biggest problem I, I come across when people are talking about microdosing is they just started with too much. And quite often people get turned off of it. They go, oh, I don't know. I, I tried microdosing, it was really unnerving. And I was like, how much were you taking? And sometimes they're taking 400 milligrams, half a gram, you know? And if I went to work on a half a gram, like up here right now, I would be falling apart on a half a gram just because I'd be like, I don't want to be in front of these people right now. You know? uh, so we want to know, we want to know, uh, yeah, our start. Yeah, that's really like our day-to-day so we have your routine. First one would be in. Yeah, I'm with you on that, and that's actually a really good point too. Like depending on what we eat, depending on our stress levels, and all those things, yeah, it can certainly play out a little differently in our body. Uh, I do recommend starting as low as you can. Like 100 milligrams is a good, like a 0.1 is a good amount. Um, some people are so sensitive that 0.5, 50 milligrams is better than 100 for them. So. Uh, actually, nano nano dosing is uh, the product I have in mind. Actually, so uh, Malcolm just gave it a name. That's all. Um, well, also, you gotta be careful because you can't just be like, "Oh, I'm gonna take a little tiny piece of the snowflake of natural mushrooms." Ooh. Because all mushrooms and all different types of mushrooms are different. That's right? the other thing too. Yeah, um, I tend to um, powder them 
and uh, on mass. So get a bunch of fruit bodies, powder them up, and then lay out your little your amounts. Yeah, because just a random bite of a thing. Yeah. yeah, you don't know what the concentration so is, right? One bite is like wow. Yeah. So much, right? Yeah. Well, that was like the piles that you did in high school. Yeah. Like, someone got a pile. Someone got a pile. It was like look about the same. Why don't stand the super? <laughs> I think we've evolved from that point now, haven't we? I hope. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and really for that versatility on the bigger doses, like so you're not taking a bunch of mycelial mine like chugging down half a bottle. Yeah, yeah. I can see also these benefits of having certain plants if you'd like to Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Like you're you're really um, you're just utilizing the things that are going to work for you in the different points of, of your journey and and yeah. So some of this is to kind of get you to kind of tune into some of these properties and maybe some of these plants will jump out at you. I'm hoping that you'll get uh, you know drawn into some of them. Um, and lion's mane has a lot of other effects. So neuroprotective, of course, that's great, right? Remyelinator that. That's not necessarily a, um, an action that we're going to utilize as far as uh, our microdosing um, goes, but it is a really interesting aspect of this particular mushroom. And a lot of people are working with uh, demyelination neuropathies and things like that. So it's just an added bonus. But nervous system was um, tonic, is, essentially, is what that means. It's a nerve growth factor agonist, so helping to stimulate that growth. It's also wound healing, so it helps to heal. People don't really think of uh, lion's mane as a gut herb, but it is really a great stomach herb. And, and I think there's that gut brain connection. So of course, lion's mane comes into that as well. And there's neurotransmission happening, a uh, creation, neurotransmitter creation happening in that, that, that gut system too, right? So it's all connected. Again, anti-ulcer, what, what are ulcers coming from? Ulcer, ulcers are coming from a lot of high stress and, and, and potentially like bad guts, right? So anti-ulcer as well. Go to cola, has anyone heard of this herb? Centella asiatica. This is a, a, a wonderful herb. It's a tonic and adaptogenic herb, but I threw, I threw it in my formula to really push everything around, right? Because this herb gets the blood out to the micro capillary beds and really perfuses every little last capillary. So that's the, the, the power of go to cola and it does a lot of healing as it goes through so it's healing uh, scar tissue it's it's going through it's healing up um, you know tears and, and and all sorts of damage in the body and it's bringing the inflammation down of course we know that uh, inflammatory processes have gone awry in the nervous system lead to depression anxiety and all those things we talked about earlier right so is a little bit of nervine sedative action, not overly, but just enough that it, it can really augment the, um, the energy or sort of the vibration of the, of the mushrooms. It's gonna balance blood sugar as well, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens when we tank blood sugar? Does anyone have a, uh, a blood sugar thing in the room? I just got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Okay. And it told, like when your sugars are too high, your eyes are kind of funny. Yeah. You're like sweaty, like full of sweat. Yeah. And like anxious and moody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Where you can like snack over nothing. Well, that's interesting that you bring that up because I, I definitely get an eye thing. I find that I'm suddenly not able to connect with people's eyes anymore. Yeah. Lots of strange things happen when we're tanking in our blood sugar. And do we want that to happen while we're on our microdose journey or on our psilocybin yeah. journey? Obviously not, right? So we're. We're, what we're doing is that we're setting ourselves up for success in all these things, not just the herbs, but the you know, set and setting, all of that plays into really capitalizing, I'm using that word again, uh, taking advantage of the situation, I suppose you could say.
and it's a peripheral vasodilator, like I said, it's pushing the blood all around the body. If you want to get something into the blood and move it around, this is your, this is your herd. Now we're going to talk about hypermethysticum or cava cava, anxiolytic. Right? So again, cutting anxiety. It's hypnotic. It's a mild sedative, they say, but I think it's based on that anxiety picture. Spasmolytic, all these things. There's a bit of a theme here, right? We're seeing that, that all these things are really nice and calming for the nervous system. It's got some local anesthetic, some mild analgesic. And then we move into things like other mushrooms, right? And, and actually, this is where uh, we employ a lot of the functional mushrooms in our larger dose explorations as well. Uh, taking things like reishi mushroom, wonderful herb we're going to talk about in a minute. But the, the lowly oyster, right? It's, uh, it's a mushroom that people don't necessarily think has all that many extra uh, amazing properties, but it's not only a nervine and antioxidant, it's also anti-inflammatory. It's got some antacid activity again. So we're having difficulty with processing whatever's happening in the guts, antioxidant, all sorts of good stuff. Oop. Yeah, absolutely. Oop. <laughs> Let's try to get this. I think that's it. <laughs> What's that? Can you steal a slide? Oh, what? Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, I am? Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Oh, too far. <laughs> too far. Too much. One more. <laughs> okay, that's what you're wanting, right? Okay, so let's try to do this. I think there's four. See, I normally have presenter notes and everything, and I'm flying blind up here, so I'm just telling you. I think that's good. I'm gonna leave it. Walk away. Oops, online can't see me. I'm sorry, I've mostly been off screen, but. The information is more important. Anyway. All right, you're good? Sweet. Okay. All right, so what else do we have in here? We have, of course, I mentioned hyper, right? Oh, question. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was just, I love lemon balm. Like, ah, <laughs> I love lemon balm too. <laughs> this, she's one of my besties. Uh, my whole yard is just covered in it. Every year, another new one popping up. So, yeah, if you need lemon balm, come over here. Got lots of it. And I have St. John's going in the front now in the, in the, in the yard. So St. John's Ward, of course, it's a, a, a kind of a natural pairing uh, with psilocybin when we're doing microdosing because we're not really at risk for pushing things into a more serotonin type state. Of course, if you are on SSRIs, that doesn't apply to you. But in the case where we're just trying to get a gentle lift and we're, we're feeling you know, a little bit down, a little bit depressed, St. John's Ward is a wonderful, mild, uh, antidepressant herb, right? It's got some nervine activity. It's it's mildly sedative. It's also wound healing, antispasmodic. So if you can't tell already, I'm really into my nervines. Uh, I love my nervine plants because I think that that's where we are kind of at. I mean, I say we in general, me and you know all of us. I think in some way or another, uh, lemon balm is an, an amazing powerful ally, it's a nerve tonic on top of other things. Thymoleptic, who knows that, who knows that word? Thymoleptic. It's another one of my favorite words because I like these big antiquated words that we don't use anymore. I think we're missing too many of those, but thymoleptic is generally just mood lifting. It's a, a mild mood lifter. And there's a couple um, thymoleptics. My other favorite is Alvisia. You've never heard of Alvisia. Uh, if you've not heard of Alvisia, go out and find some Alvisia, take a five mil shot and let me know how it goes. I'd love to know. Uh, I love how Alvisia feels in my body. It absolutely places you in your physiological body, uh, grounding and, uh, and, and just really you know, try not smiling when you take Alvisia and I guarantee you it'll be very difficult. It's like, try to keep your eyes open while sneezing. Uh, how do you spell it? Albizia? A L B I Z Z I. Yay, Albizia, yeah. Malcolm Scott Albizia. Okay. You can get it all at the light cellar, you guys. I'm just telling you right now. I was not paid to say that. <laughs> Thymoleptics, wonderful. 
relaxant as well. We need things that are relaxant. Most of us don't aren't able to calm down and get down off the edge at the end of the day. So all of these things come in uh, carminative as well, helping to just gentle, gentle calming of the, the guts there. Did everybody get that last one? He's good. <laughs> Uh, okay, we're going to talk about a couple other herbs now. Rosemary, officialis. Rosemary is one of my favorite brain herbs, but again, I don't like catching myself doing that. One of my favorites, always, right? Ooh, Alvisia. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's try it. Let's have Alvisia. Yeah, all right, I am going to try it. I am going to try to tune into that as soon as we're done, because... Yeah, how busy is amazing. Definitely one of my favorite for sure. You will email Skid Deck. I think I will. Yeah, I'd like to, just because you're not getting the full robust uh, presentation today. So yeah, we can get that. We can figure out a way to do that, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so getting back to the rosemary as we're doling out the abysia. Um Rosemary is a great brain herd and if there's any cannabis fans in the room, um, yeah, rosemary has a lot of those um, terpene phenolic compounds that are in cannabis that are, that are lovely and calming and stuff. Yeah. So, so rosemary, it's known as a calming stimulant, right? It doesn't actually flex us like coffee does, but it can wake us up. And uh, all my herbal students use this as their study buddy. You see them all sitting there snorting oh. snorting rosemary as they're trying to kind of cram it all in and then they're doing their test and they're drinking rosemary and smelling it and all sorts of stuff and i i do think there's something to it i don't think it's just a, you know a, a good luck charm or anything there's actually something to that we're circulating lots of blood in the head now right we're bringing oxygen to the brain and and that's always a good thing uh, antidepressant who, who doesn't need a little bit of that as i said Thymoleptic, there's that word again. Oh my goodness, we got another thymoleptic. And <laughs> here we are feeling really good, you know, after all this stuff. Relaxant. This has got quite quite the list, right? This one, relaxant, nerve tonic. It's calming to the guts. So there's a bit of a theme, like I said, calming the nervous system, gently calming and warming and, and, and easing the guts. Um, and we're working on our, our, our general, um, you know, general energy for the day and what is our what is our resting state that day spasmolytic of course always showing up there and then again we're, we've got some mild pain killing. and i think that we can utilize pain killing properties and things or as i said that emotional pain as well so <clears throat> don't shy away from these things if your pain seems i don't know mysterious right or or, or intangible because i think these things do represent or, or sorry, rather the, the manifest and show up in our physicality. So my final one here, I believe, um, and then it's supposed to open up like a curtain in the middle. Prickly ash, prickly ash, uh, Xanthoxylum americanum, uh, one, of, one of my favorite herbs. <laughs> um, I love Xanthox, it is, Again, one of these really noticeable, notable herbs. It's a circulatory stimulant. It's very moving of the blood and all the, the, the lymphatic tissue and everything. It helps to calm the guts. It's anti-inflammatory for, for everything. And it promotes peripheral blood flow again. So there's a lot of like flowing and moving of things, right? Lots of movement in the body. We get stagnant, our fluids get stagnant. So uh, if we have stagnancy, we're not we're not pumping blood efficiently, right? The torque, what's that? Yeah, that's right. Growing algae and things. Um, you know, the torpidity of blood actually has its own benefits as well. Um, so to keep our blood nice and and flowy is is it's got a whole bunch of extra benefits for us. I don't can't tell you about those right now. I can't remember, but look it up. Torpidity of blood promotes other wonderful things for us. I'm going to take some others here. I don't want to join on you guys on this happy journey. How are you feeling? Is anyone feeling happy? I'm feeling really good. Yeah, I'm good. Excited. There are so many. Whoa. Whoa, you did a laugh. 
Wow. <laughs> we had a drop down. <laughs> that's some, that's some how busy right there. Who makes this one? <laughs> it's uh, this, they're not missing a thing in there. No. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, see the hair stand? Yeah. Can you actually see the chicken Yeah, stand? I can yeah. see People don't. That's a real effect. Um, wow. So, anyone else? Exactly. anyone else joining me on that? I'm just curious. I mean, you only had a drop, but yeah, okay. sometimes that's all you need. Yeah, I'm all of a sudden just bing. Bing. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I like it. Uh, well, let's let's bing on to the next slide here. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's a little dark, so you're not going to be able to see it completely, um, but if you go to our mycelial line website, you'll, you'll see this as well. Uh, these are little write ups, and they're more kind of flowery language to kind of describe the herbs. So they're not necessarily tucking in and going into all the, the benefits, but mycelial mine utilizes uh, four or five herbs for each formula. Uh, unlike the, well, no, actually the Delos went to five, six herbs as well. Uh, but mycelial mine uses lion's mane, we talked about. Reishi, of course, is, is one of our, you know, it's kind of the superstar mushroom. I think it's someone that came out first and everybody was like, reishi mushroom, and then all these others came out of it. Reishi is the immortal Lingzi, right? It's known as the, uh, the immortal mushroom, uh, divine spiritual mushroom. I think immortal uh, really speaks to uh, how it can help us to live better so that we come back and do a better job next time, maybe. So that's my own thing. Uh, but, but really, um, Nervine mushroom, again, helps us to kind of calm things down, uh, manage balance, blood sugar, Really great for our liver as well. So helping to kind of process things through the liver. Anti-inflammatory. Passion flower we talked about. Holy basil. Who likes holy basil? Yeah, holy basil. Woo! Fans of the holy basil. Yeah. All right. I love it. People are fanboy. Holy basil. My students laugh because I give almost everybody holy basil and maybe rose as well. I love rose, but holy basil. Um, Osamum tenuiflorum. It was a. It's a holy tree. It's a very protective plant. In fact, the Hindus keep it outside their home for that reason. And when we look at sort of traditional, I think uses of plants, that does translate, in my opinion, into how it plays out in our body, right? So our temple, we put it out front of our temple. What is this? Is a temple too? So we can put that in our temple, and we can protect ourselves. And we we not only uh, work on things like blood sugar. But it, it helps to purify our blood. Uh, it helps to battle um, infection and things like that. So a great herb just for the for the polyphenolic compounds that are, that are good at fighting bugs and things like that. But holy basil has its own energy, its own sort of power, and it's got the word holy. So I figure, you know, it's going to take you to that place <laughs> if you need to go there. Uh, of course, you know, there is that that thought that. Um, we start off in this kind of scientific idea of what we're doing, but uh, eventually, you know, you always come out into spirituality. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> it's just what happens. And not to scare anyone, if you're not into that stuff, you're just gonna end up, you're just gonna end up there. Yeah. It's kind of what happens. You, you dig into it. Now. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have in there? We have skull cap. Uh, skull cap is the one that I think of. Uh, with that monkey mind, it's that Buddhist saying, like, you know, thoughts that are kind of swinging from one thing to the next, and, and we're lying in bed going, oh, I can't get off this, this looping thought behavior. Skullcap is the, the, the um, kibosh in the, in the looping thoughts. So, so a wonderful herb. It helps with muscular tension, reduces anxiety and stress and things like that. Um, again, another herb that just kind of facilitates this experience. Ginger. Uh, besides being uh, an amazing, tasty uh, herb that we can add to things, uh, it actually has some interruption of pain that's essential. So we can take ginger into our body and feel less pain. That's good, right? We want to feel less pain, don't we? Um, and we can, we can get our blood moving again. We can get everything, uh, and we can gently calm the stomach. So we're hitting, again, so you're looking for actions and things that oh, hit all the, the, the goals, right, that you're aiming at. Uh, when it comes to this stuff. Ashwagandha as well. I noticed you have a nice looking ashwagandha up there. Um, they make here at the light cellar. That would be a great uh, way to start experimenting with this herb, right? Grab yourself a bottle of ashwagandha 
sit at home and do this this drop dosing thing and, and see where it takes you. It's it's the 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 nervine adaptogen that I consider in my pharmacopoeia. Whenever somebody needs some mitigation from stress and they're kind of high functioning nervous system, I like ashwagandha. That's the nervine adaptogen uh, that I have in my like I said I have in my in my in my what am I looking for? There's a word. Yeah, thank you. In my medicine bag. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's one of those plants that that um, it has a very specific person, very specific archetype, I think, and that's that low functioning person that needs something to really bring them back out and and through the uh, the thick of the fog, if you will. A few other herbs in here um, that we chose. Elitaria has some. Uh, calming antispasmodic stuff for the gut. So really good and encouraging healthy microbiome, but it tastes wonderful too, right? Let's not forget that flavor is a good part of all of this. And, and it should play into our experience as well because flavor informs us of, of certain things and, and it can really uh, accentuate this practice. Cordyceps, we talked a bit about, did we talk about cordyceps yet? Maybe not. Um, does anyone know about cordyceps? Does anyone love cordyceps? A few, a few people, a few people, a few people in here. So powerful mushroom. It has this ability to kind of give us the the capacity for for functioning, but yet yeah, doesn't sort of push us over the edge. Um, it's a calming, relaxing stimulant. So again, these are these are words we want to hear when, when combining with the practice of of using psilocybin. We want a nice, calm approach, but we want to get into it as well. A lion's mane again popping up there. So I have a little section here on cacao uh, specifically, uh, just because I wanted to highlight some of the effects that cacao has on the body and how it can even bring in cacao as a, a lovely partner to this practice. Uh, it's clean that it reduces nausea. And so that's something, of course, that you've seen so far. I've formulated a lot of things to make sure that they're not in your brain. Uh, it also opens up blood vessels, stimulates uh, circulation, opening up the lungs, allowing for, for more of that love chemical, right, to, to kind of generate. It's said that dimethyltryptamine is also um, synthesized in the lungs, right? So that's part of our, our overall functioning in general. We have DMT release when we're sleeping, when we die, and when we're born. But it acts on the serotonin receptors. So, so uh, that bliss chemical, right? That bliss idea, there's some actual science behind it. Uh, it's another one of these MOA, MO, uh, M A, M O A I, I always get those letters. <laughs> Monoamine oxidase is here. It's actually spelled like that. It's just pretty odd. Uh, <laughs> so, helping it to, to be longer and lasting in the body and, 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 and stronger also helping to enhance the absorption of things and potentially making things maybe a little more intense, but also more consistent across the board. Pardon me, and described by indigenous people as the ultimate part of it. You hear that a lot. Um, I heard that way before I knew it came from anyone who actually was using these plants in a traditional sense. Uh, but now that I have the backup, I'm like, okay, yeah, I've got it on good authority, this is the heart of it. But we all know that, right? Chocolate is, is kind of known to be. And I, I wanted to call on Malcolm uh, just for a second to maybe add in anything if you, if you can, or if you have any thoughts on, on cacao and how that's beneficial. Um, Did I get it all? Yeah. Did you get any taste? Taste, there you go. And, and in fact, um, I think we should just do this now. Well, let's try this. Yeah. Let's try the other one. So Malcolm, maybe do a drop. It won't keep you up. Um, but this one, just tastes really nice, and I think everyone should have a little taste of it. This one has cacao shells in it, and <clears throat> pardon me, the reason being is because cacao shells actually have a lot more flavor. They impart a bit more flavor when it comes to tincturing. So that was really, it was all about just getting that kind of cacao flavor and, and pairing it with the cardamom uh, just to oh, give a nice, uh, a nice delicate flavor. And I think we achieved that, maybe? Really good. Really good. <laughs> Micro salad dressing. <laughs> Look for my next product coming out soon. <laughs> for all you vegetarians out there, it's the microdose salad dressing. Yeah, I love it. 
That's a great idea. Yeah, why not? Uh, okay, let's let's check out some of the things online here. Okay, I think I'm up to date, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have up here. So I got a question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So just so those of that maybe don't know, and he's uh, he mentioned these things. So he's formulated a number of products. Uh, so there's these guys, the ones in capsules, but the ones that we've been tasting, the mycelial mines. Now. Why apple cider vinegar? Ah, What's going on? There? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You can taste it. That's the reference to salad dressing. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of kind of microdosing products out there, be it capsules, uh, be it tinctures, be it, you know. Yeah, vitamin C. I mean, yeah. there's all sorts of things. And then, then you come along with uh, apple cider vinegar base. So what, what's the deal? Yeah, so apple cider vinegar is not only a wonderful way to extract alkaloids, but it keeps them in preserves them in a little bit more stability for a little bit longer. So we did a few things to, to create that stability. Uh, we added a bit of wildflower honey, uh, some, some actual ascorbic acid, and, uh, and that uh, apple cider vinegar. So that's the preservant, but also the efficient um, extractor. And it tastes nice, right? Kind of augments the flavor, it adds into it. And yeah, people kind of get a fruit aftertaste from it. Yeah, yeah, so apple cider is a wonderful way to pull out and, and stabilize alkaloids at least a little bit longer. The psilocybin molecule is very unstable. Uh, we've tried extracting it to a hyper pure form and it wants to take on moisture right away. So if you make a crystal, leave it out, it will pull ambient moisture from the, from the air and it will become unstable and it will start to degrade really quickly. So having it in an aqueous solution is a good idea. It's a good way to preserve it a bit longer. And as I said, we added in those little extra bits and bobs to make sure it sticks around. I still recommend that you eventually you want to keep the bigger one in the fridge. I think if you're going to buy the big one, but I have a few smaller ones as well, and you can probably get away with getting through those fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and <clears throat> the capsule, by the way, um, I should just mention, since we're talking about preserving things, uh, we went with a physical preserver in, in the Delos products. This is called Miron Glass. Has anyone heard of Miron Glass before? Yeah, yeah, see, we got a champion of Miron Glass. So uh, that's what you do when you find out what Miron Glass does. Um, I wish you could turn the camera on you for a second. So Miron Glass uh, is wonderful at protecting. And I'm gonna give you the really, really basic uh, rundown on, on their imagery that they have on their website where they take a regular brown jar and they take one of their jars and they drop a strawberry in each one did you see this I think so. yeah and they they leave it in there for a month and they pull it out at the end and of course the one is horribly rotten and falling apart and weird colors and everything. the other one's nice and red and juicy looking and oh, and beautiful wow. it's basically like uh like light um resistant um oxygen what's that sorry why like the actual color it's like a oh. it's like a deep indigo glass and these are apothecary jars, so they're 100% they're glass. The idea behind this, and we're only at phase one of this project, but yeah. eventually I would have a, a replacement um, order. You would order replacement capsules and you fill your. Yeah, these are, so, these are so pretty. I mean, I chose this because I would want to buy it. That's the only reason. I'm like, that's super pretty. I want that. You have to, like, um, 100%. Yeah, you can make it, you can dream big, right? Um, I'll actually go on the office here. Give you the Since we're here, I'm holding the product. I might as well keep going. Um, <clears throat> the idea behind the Delos packaging is it's very simple. When somebody is on mushrooms, they don't look any different, right? They're just, you got a regular box here, but there's a, that's the spark of divinity. That's you and you and you and everybody in here, right? It's that little spark of divinity that's there. But when we look on the inside of the person who's having a journey of some kind, right? There's all sorts of fun stuff going on. <laughs> and in these uh, in these designs, right? We did little nods to the psychedelia. Um, the cannabis plant has a little hand that holds it up. Uh, the chamomile flowers have eyes if you look closely. So stuff like that, right? We wanted it to be a nod to the idea of what we're doing, but it's not like. Yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I was thinking to be much to the world. I was taking away from the world. And now I'm moving into those other directions. But yeah, this is not My Little Pony. This is the evolution of My Little Pony. <laughs> this is My Little Pony. My Little Pony. <laughs> you can have your very own. <laughs> so where were we? OK. Let's see. Let's check the papers. What do we have left on here? Okay, so some of the other herbs actually that were, oh, I got right out of things here. Oh, you can't. That's it. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> things are happening. That's it. That's your last slide. That's my last slide. Can we go? Can we just sit on it? Oh, sure. Yeah. Fine, so. Okay. Uh, pine pollen is another term that we're using. Yerba mate is from this latest one. So you're trying this one right now, the vitality formula. Yerba mate, who knows yerba mate here? Yeah, it's a South American uh, herb, yerba, if you will. Uh, and they drink it out of a gourd. Uh, you pack this stuff in, you stick a bombilla, a bombisha, depending on where you are, into your, into your cup. You fill it with hot water continuously and you share it with everybody. You, they're sitting there and it's a wonderful little process but it wakes you right up oh yeah and again it's nodding back there you're next i'm going to have you come to all my talks and you can just kind of back up what i'm saying <laughs> my, my cheering section back there but yeah absolutely yerba mate is super super clean but stimulating and it would have been one of these herbs that would have prolonged say a, a hard day of work for some of these uh some of these um Civilizations that use them. That's not where I was looking for. Um, towns, villages. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> there's a word there. It's eluding me at the moment. Um, so yeah, your romantic cardamom talked about. Sarsaparilla is another one of the herbs that I use. Smilax is the Latin, and sarsaparilla is that flavor in root beer, in fact. But it's really a lovely lymphatic and blood purifying herb. So really good for just cleansing our body and. And, uh, and tonifying blood. So taking steps and finding ways. What am I talking about here? I love the notes I give myself. Um, I just want to ask about how your tea sometimes uses that a lot. Absolutely love. Yeah, Damian is in one of my formulas as well. Damian is one of my favorite herbs. Again, <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd say that a lot. Uh, <laughs> Fully embodying herb though, it like really puts you in your in your body. Again, it's it's sort of one of these thymoleptics, but it's a bit different. It feels juicier. There's something there, right? And it kind of got some like chia. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it. Like, yeah, it brings you into that's thank you for that part, actually. So that's the part I was missing. It brings you into your heart space. And that's what we're doing, right? We want to we want to get here as much as we can. I tend to fall out of here and go into here. Right? It's like, oh, get that out of there, put that back in here. Um, so we want to open up our heart, and Damien is a wonderful way to get into our heart space, stay there, feeling really good, feeling really in tune and in touch with everything around us. Hey? Yeah, Damien is a wonderful plant that Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I think it's in my thymoleptic form. Yeah, yeah, it just as a feel good herb. So that might be one to check out. Um, Additional ways we can support ourselves while we're doing this. Okay, so you know, what are you consuming mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally? And this may sound a little bit kind of cliche, but in fact, if we're doing one thing and we're not doing all these other things, right? We're only doing one part of this, our chances of success are just lower, right? It doesn't mean we're not going to succeed in what we're trying to do, but we can bring all these things together. And I'm not trying to freak you out either, like, like, oh my god, I got to do it all, and I'm, that, that's, enough, that's enough to make everyone go, oh, fuck it, I'm not doing it. I hate the department. Um, I think you can do all of it, but you just have to approach it in a nice methodical way, right? Like we can, we can apply this mental. So what do I mean by that? What are we ingesting mentally um, while we're doing this stuff? Are we watching Desperate Housewives or whatever every night? Right. I hope not, uh, because that just makes us Desperate Housewives. What we watch is what we become, like what we pull in. You guys know about mirror neurons? Am I telling you anything new? Mirror neurons, it's like when we watch things on a screen, we literally think that we're the ones doing it. And right? we actually believe that. 
And so that's why we get scared that scary movies are turned on by, what's that? I need to stop watching a lot. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's kind of, I mean, depending on what you're doing, yeah, but yeah. That's why I have a problem with eating. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's honestly, it's the stuff that we feed in that, that plays out in our experience a hundred percent. So, um, you know, I, I, I took this idea really far and I thought I'm going to stop watching violent things because that wasn't feeling good. I'm going to stop reading garbage. And I started just ingesting things that were really helpful and beneficial. Even if I didn't understand them, I still kind of plowed through them anyway, thinking I'm packing it in, right? And it's going to help to inform my way of being in the world. So if we're inhaling or ingesting rather good mental diet, right? Good, good content, um, spiritual, spiritual. We don't have to be anything to be spiritual. We're already there. By the way, we're in the spirit world. I hate to, hate to tell you. <laughs> You're already there. It's just really distracting. There's all these hard things we bump into. It feels very real, right? It feels like this is a thing. Like, oh my gosh, this is gonna hurt. Uh, but we're already there, right? We're just experiencing uh, a version of a dimension with our sensory uh, organs and all that. But I have another bombshell to drop on you. All that's ex outside of our experience as well, right? So when I look out and I see these arms, and I go, oh, yeah, I can touch things and I can feel them. Well, that's also a projection. I'm projecting these arms out. Am I getting too weird now? <laughs> no, <keep going. laughs> we need a whole other class now. How oh my gosh. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, uh, let's, you guys want to come back tomorrow and we'll just go, go <laughs> super deep into <laughs> some of that stuff. I have some time theories as well that are really important. <laughs> let's get into it really quick. I'm going to tell you one quick thing that is a very helpful part of this process. And it's all to do with the present moment. Right? You guys have heard that that the, the time all happens at the same time. Have you heard this before? Time all happens at once. There's only the present moment, like the past and the future don't really exist, right? It's just this present moment. So everything kind of happens at once. Let's just go with that. It's an assumption, we can't prove it, but we can go with it. And we can, this is a useful device really is what I'm getting at here. So I'm living in the present moment. That means that the me that's being born is being born right now. And the me that's dying is dying right now. And the me in between all those stages is happening right now. So what if I could reach through the dimensional portal of time and talk to myself? What if I could talk to my little self? Let's start with our little self. That's a good place to start because our little self was neglected, right? I think I can say straight up, no matter what we did, no matter how, how great our parents were, they, they did what they thought at the time was a good idea I was part of the cry it out generation. I don't know about anyone else, but the thought was you leave them in bed until they're done crying and then they're not going to cry anymore. That apparently had some psychological effects on us, <laughs> right? But we can utilize this idea and we can talk to our little self. We can reach back through time and we can, I use this in the form of journal. So I'll write to my little self. I'll say, hey man, you're super good now. You're, 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 you're safe, you're loved, you're well cared for and you're seen and you're heard, you know, all the things that we didn't get or, or felt that you didn't get, you can say that to your younger self. That eventually catches up to you now. And so, has anyone seen Bill and Ted's excellent adventure? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when they plant the key and they're like, we'll go back after the time machine and wow, there's the key. <laughs> I'm kind of utilizing this idea, right? So we're, we're talking to our little self and we're saying, hey, it's cool, you're good. But we can equally do this on the other end. And I, I utilize this. I, I talk to the old wise sage that I become. I've got this big long, I can see myself, I like, big see long beard. You. And, and I, I think I've designed at this point, I'm just straight up wearing a cloak and everything, like, you know, <laughs> living on the edge of the forest. And I go, wise old sage Tony, what do I need to do to get to you? You know, you've made it clearly, right? You've done everything and, and you've achieved those goals. So, what does it take for me to get to you? And I'll write to that person. I'll say, send that information back in time so I can grab it and I can keep going. These are just little helpful little tips that can help this thing be a little bit better for us, right? Um, <clears throat> but I like that. I think that the time thing can really be a powerful, powerful practice. Journaling, writing in general, right? We can do other things with writing. Prognostication. This is extra. But am I good for time? <laughs> <laughs> Um, prognostication. We can prognosticate too. So I like this one as well. It's another little hack. But say we're starting our micro microdose practice. We want to set the ball in motion. We want success, right? So we have to start thinking about the success that we already have. 
our brains love it when they believe that we already have something and we just draw ourselves toward that thing. Like this, right? I'm, we're not even trying, we're just being drawn. Do you like my being drawn towards it? We're being pulled, right? We're being pulled. You everyone got that? Yeah? Yeah. One more? Yeah. We're being pulled toward the thing that we, that we set out, right? That we put ahead of ourselves. So we can prognosticate. My day went amazing today. I had less stress than I normally have. How did that happen? Done. Start the day. I found myself coming back and actually experiencing that very thing. I would take it really far and I would see myself walking into my wife going, how was your day? I'm like, great. And then I'd come home and I would be like, we're out of doing the thing. I'm doing what I set forward, right? What I put in motion is playing out. So we can utilize that as well. And we can write about our day. And Robert Rogers actually gave me a, a better hack. It was, it was this idea, but it was better. And I, I gave you, actually, I gave you his hack already. Mine was just to say a statement. My day went really well. But, but Robert Rogers says, make it a question. How is it that I didn't get stressed out at all today? And then you walk away and your brain goes, what? You're going to make me think, oh, and it starts working on the problem. Problem. It starts in the background. It's going, how is it that I did this? How did I? And you just find yourself carrying out that, that program, right, without even thinking about it. So. I love to tell people prognosticate and give yourself the best chance of success by saying, hey, my day is going to go the way I need it to. I'm going to get what I need out of this practice. And you're going to, you know, write down at the start of the day and wow, microdosing is really helping me in all the ways that I thought. It would. Maybe there's some extra power there. So I really want to give you guys as much as I can here in the, in the three minutes I've got. <laughs> Are we done? There? Are we done? We're done. My goodness. So you guys have an extra couple of hours because I'm not even nearly <laughs> done chatting. All right. I well, guess. Cool. Any questions Thanks. here? Well, let's wreck people's time. We're, we're at 8.30. That's a little slow. That clock. Oh, so. okay. Okay. Yeah, so I should have given it a little bit extra time. Guys, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, good. Um, but, uh, I'll mill around for a bit, though. Yeah. Wanna... Tony's here. If you have any other questions, you want to connect with him. But uh, appreciate you guys coming. And uh, yeah, chat will be open and we will be able to help you out. But, uh, and if you want anything from Tony, uh, he'll meet you in the back alley. Get <laughs> <laughs> a jacket. <laughs> you got the briefcase. A you Rolex the briefcase. or... Uh... <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just a snake oil, my guy. No. Yeah. Cool. No, we're all out of snake oil. So. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to all people online. I'm sorry. I think I, think I neglected you a little bit. But no, you're getting... Thank you, thank, so thank you. you. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, cool. So what we're gonna do is, yeah, everybody who's registered, I'll send you the slide deck with all the fancy transitions, oh, be awesome. beautiful awesome. font. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have PowerPoint. But. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyways, thanks, thanks again for joining us, coming here. And uh, don't forget that your travel buddies, your friends with benefits are right here at the lights. There you go. I can take off my uh, voice, voice to my headset. <laughs> here we are. I was wondering.